Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean, and I'm here today to guide you through your Wednesday yin yoga experience. Oh, did I put it over there? Don't worry, I've got the experience. Uh, today's class is all about just helping us to relieve stress and relax and remove anxiety. I do encourage you to bring a block, maybe some pillows or cushions to sit on. We do have um, legs up against an imaginary wall, so you might want to bring a strap or something that you can use to wrap around your feet, like a towel or a belt if you don't have a strap, just so you can feel supported and relax as much as possible in today's longer holds. The whole point of yin is to be as relaxed as possible and also to create stillness. So we got three minutes till class starts. We're gonna start in Sukhasana in an easy seated position of your choice, but now is the time to, if you've been sitting all day, maybe walk around for a minute or two. Just find what feels good. If you already wanna come and uh, sit down in your space. Perhaps you give yourself a couple rolls of the neck, just working to release your stress. Maybe grab some water, change the lighting, make sure you're wearing some comfortable, relaxed clothing. Yay. Hope we're in space. Make it smell nice in here. I know that for me, when it smells nice, I'm so much more likely to take some big, deep breaths. Hey, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from the clean. Oh no, it's super bright behind me. It's okay. It's okay, close your eyes, ignore it. Uh, and I'm here today to guide you through your amazing yin yoga experience, which starts right now with Sukhasana, with an easy seated position of your choice. If you're having trouble getting those knees to slope down towards the floor, consider propping yourself up on a cushion such as I did, or maybe a rolled or folded up towel, blanket, whatever you got around. 
All right, start to come into your stillness. Really start to ground your sit bones. Start to relax your shoulders away from your ears. Elbows are hanging heavy down towards the floor. Find a nice neutral chin. That's the right word, right? That sounds very odd to me right now. Just make sure you're not putting any extra wrinkles in your neck. Notice if you're pitching forward or back. Take another moment to adjust your seat or use your hands on your knees to help you find a little bit of an extra lift or to remove any rounding. A slight engagement of your abdominal core. It's gonna help your back feel good here as well. Create some length through the crown of your head. Just hang out here with your breath. Slowing that breath down, noticing how your body feels today. Right now, just take note, no expectations. Whatever happens, happens. <clears throat> but work into that stillness and your relaxation. And throughout the rest of the class, try to get there mindfully, but as quickly as possible. Do a slow scan of your body from head to toe. And just check in with yourself to see if you have any points where you're tensing your muscles more than you need to. While we do have this engagement of our abdominal core and a little stretch up through the crown of our head, and we're working to take the wrinkles out of our neck and ground through our sit bones, we can relax our faces as much as possible. You can relax your fingers and your toes. A little relaxation of your chest. So just keep checking in with yourself. Notice if you're bringing any extra tension or stress and where it might be. And if you can use your exhale to just let it go. How much can you be right here, right now, with the contraction that you're creating in your core? The gentle squeeze of those shoulders, the opening of your chest, and the stretch through the crown of your head, can you continue to focus on that? Where does your mind go? If it goes anywhere besides your body and your breath, how can you bring it back to right here, right now? I know we all have many other things on our plates, maybe even on our schedule for the rest of today, but you made this time for yourself. So really honor yourself as much as possible during this time. Efficient in our bodies and our minds. We have one minute left here in this breath, meditation, just opening of the practice. Next up, we're going to go for um, a wide bound angle. So feet a little further forward than you normally would if you heard butterfly or cobbler. If your hips are really tight, you're welcome to stay lifted on your prop as many of us might have started for Sukhasana. Having this lift takes a lot of the pressure out. However, if you extend your feet in front of you and you don't happen to feel any sort of a stretch or an awareness, 
go ahead and lower yourself down off of your prop. You also do have an option to hinge forward to create that stretch. I'm gonna go ahead and come up off of my prop because staying lifted with my feet on the floor was creating a little bit more pressure towards the outside of my knees than it honestly felt good. All right, so we've got three minutes here. If you need to, you can always bring your hands behind your back and find a lift of your chest and just work to exhale and relax the outsides of the knees closer to the mat. Or you're welcome to hinge forward. It's normal here in the unit. <laughs> gosh in yin yoga uh, to have some just like involuntary twitches of your body we're just working to eliminate any of the extra things that we might do so maybe if you notice that your your pants are not perfect you normally might have fixed them so right now your challenge in today's practice is just to let them be let your hair get messed up let your shirt shift around. If you have an itch, can you hone in on your breath and work to not scratch your itch until the end of the posture? No need to go any deeper once you've found that stillness. If your body does happen to gently fall forward a little bit more, that's okay, you can let it, but no need to push yourself any further. When you found yourself in the beginning of each asana, each posture, just a few more breaths right here. you hinged forward carefully lift yourself back up go ahead extend your legs out in front of you oh, it feels good you can even bob your knees windshield wipe your feet shake your shoulders out we got a quick little spine twist coming up next whichever side you would like to turn to take a moment sit yourself up nice and tall and cross one leg over the opposite leg I still have a gentle little forward hinge. Whichever leg you've crossed over behind you, bring that same hand close by your back and press into the pads of your fingers like they're a kickstand. Inhale, the opposite arm up, and then over, reach it down towards the floor. If you have a mat or something that you can hold on to, here, I'll switch to the opposite side so you can see. So something that you can hold on to to help you stay in this twist, to open your chest, to engage those shoulder blades. We have just under one minute right here. If your eyes are open, find one spot to softly gaze your eyes, because remember, if they're moving, your mind is moving. Stillness in the body, stillness in the mind, encouraged by the slow stillness of your breath. Enjoy one more inhale, find a little bit of length through the crown of your head, draw your core in once more and then carefully untwist. Extend your legs out, go ahead, switch right into the other side, bring the opposite hand behind you like a kickstand, inhale your straight leg, arm up and over to the opposite side if you have something you can hold on to to help you open up your chest and release that rounding, come into as shallow or deep of a spine twist that works for you. 
Again, just under a minute on this side. So take a couple more breaths. Inhale to find that lift and length and engagement of your core and exhale to gently untwist. Awesome. Next up we have half dragonfly. So go ahead, extend one leg out, your choice which leg you would like to do first and keep the opposite leg gently folded in uh, once again. Do what feels right for your body today. If you're feeling really tight, if your hips are really tight, you might need to bring your hands behind you. You can work to relax your shoulders away from your ears. Or if you're feeling good, you can find a slight forward hinge. As you hinge forward, you're going to increase the stretch along the back of your leg, along the hamstring, and also a little bit on the inside and into the knee. The whole goal is to find stillness. So I'd rather that you be someplace gentle where you just have a teeny little noticeable stretch than come forward so deeply that you find yourself continuing to come out and then go back in. Find that happy place, stay right there. We got three more minutes here. So once you have your noticeable stretch and you're in your stillness, you're just coming right back to your breath. It's all about the breath. Allow it to guide the depth of the posture to begin with. So you can stay right here, right now, <clears throat> hanging out in these postures for a little bit longer just helps to Create a deeper awakening through the fascia, ligaments, tissues, skin, even down into your bones. So use your inhale to be aware of whatever feelings you're feeling right now. They're awesome. They make you you and you're entitled to all of them. I know some of these postures can be easier than others. Use your breath to relax. You've got this.
hinge forward. Take your time. Gently lift yourself up. We're going to fold our extended leg in just for a moment. Bring our hands behind us. Pull your shoulders down. Roll them back. Pull your rib cage in. And then lift up from your chest. Lift your chin up towards the ceiling. But keeping that belly pulled in tight. Just taking a little seated back bend here. Emphasizing the arch of the back. Find some relaxation in your neck. Release it back as much or as little as feels good for you. Make sure you can still breathe. We're going to take two more big breaths here. Carefully lift yourself up after that second breath. Take your time, extend your opposite leg out. Let's get our half dragonfly Oof, on the other side. Remember both sides of the body aren't the same, so maybe you hinge forward on one side, but on the opposite side, you need to keep those hands behind you. Or maybe the opposite is true for you. Feel free to use those props to relax here. Find a place to relax your hands or your elbows, or even your chest. <clears throat> Just make sure you come into the stillness and start that total body scan from your head down to your toes. Notice if you're doing anything weird. As you're sitting here, are you accidentally shifting to one side or are you still grounded through the center line? Feel free to close your eyes, to melt into the moment in your breath, into the floor, into the stretch. Just about one minute left right here. I want to encourage you all as we're moving through class today and every day, if there's ever any posture that you're doing that just doesn't feel right, feel free to change it up, do something else, maybe lay down in Savasana, but if you ever want to talk about how can you make that work for you, please just Drop a note in the comments, ask me to set up a time to chat. Let's find a way to have you, have you feeling as amazing as you possibly can. All right, last two breaths right here. When you finish that second breath, if you have hinged forward, Lift yourself up once again. Bring that opposite leg in. Bring your hands behind you. Maybe even a little bit closer towards uh, your glutes as you once again find this lifting of the chest, a little seated, supported back bend. So start off by really stretching your chin up towards the ceiling, drawing that rib cage together, finding that back bend from the upper back area, not just leaning from that lower back. Ooh. I felt a great pop. If you see it with your eyes, trace a line with it. How far back can you look back? One more big inhale, lift. Exhale, look. And take your time, lift yourself back up. Give 
yourself a roll of the neck side to side if it feels right and extend your legs both out. Just a moment here in full dragonfly. Inhale, both arms up overhead. Exhale, open your arms wide out to the side. We're gonna get a nice little shoulder stretch. So cross one arm over, grab hold either above or below the elbow. Just don't apply any pressure directly towards the elbow. Two more breaths right here. Create that relaxation for yourself. On your inhale, open those arms all the way up. And on your exhale, bring the stretch over to the opposite side. No expectation, just ooh, do what this side of your body can do today. Relax through your shoulders, ground through your sit bones. Two more breaths. On this last inhale, open those arms all the way up. And exhale, relax them down by your side. Okay, we're gonna come over onto all fours. Next up we have melting heart pose. You might wanna keep a prop nearby especially if your chest and shoulders, upper back feel really tight. Let me just take a moment to be a winner and tuck my shirts in. Tuck my shirt in like a winner. That's what I like to do. Tuck my shirt in like a winner. When I do yoga with you. I made that up just now. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So we're going to be really cool to ourselves today in our melting heart pose, and we're gonna break it down to one side at a time. So if you don't have a prop nearby, you don't have to worry about it. You can use your forearm. You can still brace yourself up a little bit higher on your prop if you need to. We're gonna start in tabletop. Yay, you're gonna to start to walk those hands forward and do your best to keep your glutes stacked right on top of your knees. You can make a pillow with one hand and walk the opposite arm forward. I'm gonna bring the timer closer so I know how long we've been here. And then I want you to tent your extended hand fingers. Now, if it's really hard for you to stay here in melting heart pose, if this is too much in your shoulder and your upper back, then you get to release your glutes a little closer towards your heels and find yourself in child's pose and just take a lot of the stress out of that upper back shoulder opening. However, if you've got it in you to hang out here, we're gonna hang out here for two amazing minutes. And if you wanna go a little bit deeper, you can always um, take your forehead off of that bent arm on the floor. Can you create some space in your shoulders? Work to press equally through both of your knees. Notice if you shifted your hips to find comfort in this posture.
Take your time. We're going to carefully walk that opposite hand in. You can lift yourself up gently. Lower yourself down. Walk your opposite hand out. Come back into your spider fingers or tenting. Remember, you can have your head as lifted as you want or don't want. And both sides of the body are different. So just do what feels right for this side of the body today. That feels better. Stay still. Chest is sinking towards the floor. If this is a little bit too much, consider walking your hands, your extended hand out to the edge of your mat to give yourself a little bit more space. You're in control of creating the relaxation for yourself here. Only you can do it, but you've got to use your breath and your mind. If you believe it, you can achieve it, even if you have to continue to try over and over again within each second. Less than a minute to go. Great work. Go ahead and walk. Ugh. Walk that opposite hand in. Let's go ahead and sink our hips towards our heels. Take five breaths in happy baby. And then we're going to pull ourselves up and come back into Sukhasana. If it doesn't feel right for you to have these arms extended all the way in front of you, consider taking a generous bend of your elbow, finding what does work, just allowing your head to come down below heart's level. Once you finish that fifth breath, you can pull yourself up into tabletop, cross your ankles behind you, and then simply walk back as you sit down on your glutes. Bam, we made it into Sukhasana again. All right, so next up we've got square pose or fire logs, sometimes referred to as double pigeon. Don't be intimidated. Take whichever leg you would like to start with and get that lined up with uh, the edge of your mat or the top of your mat. We're gonna take this extended top leg and drag it all the way over. So right now you're on the glute of your lower bent leg. Fold that leg in as if we're going for a version of spine twist. So you have the outside of the ankle close to the knee. And as you lower that lifted knee's glute to the floor, you find yourself in double pigeon. Maybe you're feeling really tight today and there's no way you're going to get this glute towards the floor and there's no way this knee is going to come down. You're wrong. There is a way. You can always fold your mat in if you've got one to give yourself a little bit more support and then bring a prop here in the space that's created so you can enjoy some support in your double pigeon. Remember, every day is different, so there might be some days where it's really easy, where you're feeling really open and you can easy breezy stack everything, and there might be some days where things are feeling really tight and it's just not gonna happen. And that's also 
absolutely fine. If you want to, you can hinge forward just a little bit. This one's a big stretch, so just continue to breathe through it. Find that relaxation in your shoulders. You should be feeling a little bit of a bigger stretch in whichever um, hip and then throughout the top of the leg that you have on top. We're going to spend one more minute right here. And then we're going to open this hip up really nicely and try out the other side. You're ready for your last three breaths here. Take those big total body scans. Know that you're so close to the end. See if you can release into the stretch just a little bit more. Once you finish that third breath, we're gonna lift ourselves up. Release this cross of the legs, bring both of your feet to the floor, and then press yourself up into a reverse tabletop. Really press through your heels, press the balls of the feet under the big toe, under the pinky, squeeze your glutes, hips up. You can relax your head back gently. Take two breaths. Slow breaths though. And on your exhale, release yourself back down. Great, we're gonna get the opposite side. So this time, fold that other bottom leg in, creating a 90 degree angle almost. You're gonna drag the opposite leg over. Go ahead, bring that heel close to the outside of your knee. And then take your time. Use those exhales, you might even need to Adjust your legs. As you can see, I still have some space, so I'm not pressing the ankle bone into my opposite knee. There's some space on the outside that you could cut my feet off. Um, sock space is doing its own jam. And if you want to, if you want to create a little extra stretch, you can flex your toes back to the face or just let them be and focus a little bit more on the opening of the hip. If it feels good to hinge forward, hinge forward. If you need to stay leaning back and opening that chest, just work to bring that rib cage together just a little bit so you can really feel supported here. And the back can gently engage. All right. Just under one minute left. Let's go ahead one more time, release ourselves out, place the soles of both feet down on the floor. Plant your hands behind you, take a deep inhale, press yourself up into this big hip opener one more time, take three slow breaths. on this third exhale, gently lower yourself down to the floor once again. Have that strap nearby. We're going to relax ourselves all the way down towards the floor. Next up, we have legs up against an imaginary wall. 
or if you have a couch nearby or something that you can throw your legs up against, you're welcome to. Neither you can just let gravity do the work. You can take a slight bend in your knees. You can open your arms wide to the side. Get a nice little stretch or maybe make a beautiful W with your hands or elbows. If it feels right for you, you can use your strap to help you enjoy those legs up against the imaginary wall. Just letting uh, your blood flow to the heart center. I'm going to release this strap. Coming close towards the end here, y'all. We did a lot of hip opening moves because as we've discussed so much lately, the hips are a place where we store a lot of our dormant energy and our emotions and frequently opening the hips and also relaxing and relieving the tension in the back of the legs and in the lower back. Hips, legs, lower back, all connected. And if you've ever heard it, you know that if you have a happy spine, a happy back, you have a happy life. So all of these things come together just to make us feel so good. So we work to open those spaces. And now we're just still really encouraging that blood flow, that lymphatic draining down to the heart. Getting a little extra blood flow to the heart really helps to promote the feeling of relaxation. So this is a great posture to do uh, if you're having trouble sleeping. All right, we're gonna take it a little bit deeper. So go ahead, open those knees wide to the side, but make sure that lower back stays glued down towards the mat. So if reaching up for your knees means that your bum lifts up off of the floor and you're not getting the support, then don't, I meant knees, now you reach for toes then don't reach up for your toes. Use that prop. Feel free to open your knees even wider to keep that lower back down on the mat and to still enjoy a little bit of happy baby. I think it's so much easier if you open things out wide to the side as opposed to keeping things in really close and tense and then, ugh, then I create a horrible rounding feeling for me in my shoulders, but maybe it feels good for you. So just opening those legs a little bit wider, pressing still through the soles of my feet up towards the ceiling. Uh, I'm able to keep my back engaged on the floor and especially uh, keeping that sacrum down on the mat. We're gonna spend just over one minute more right here. Next, we're gonna have our final savasana. However, if before final savasana, you wanna give yourself a little bit of a lower back massage and gently rock yourself from side to side. Go forward, feel free to create a little movement right here so we'll be able to relax fully in that final stillness, get the last of those stretches towards the legs, the lower back, even rolling uh, around on those shoulders a little bit. All right, and when you're ready, begin to release your feet down to the floor. You can use your strap to help you to move with some control. If your back is hurting today, feel free to keep those knees bent. Take a slight little tuck up 
of that pelvis to get your lower back glued down on the floor. However, if your body is feeling great and it feels right for you, then you can go ahead, extend your legs out, and come into a more traditional savasana. Sorry, things I'm kicking. Feel free to open your arms a little wider or legs a little wider. Find what really honors your body today and commit to being here the next three minutes of silence and stillness. But during these silent still minutes, continue your scan of your body from head to toe and ask yourself how most you can relax. Beautiful stillness, everyone. Take a little wiggle of your fingers, take a little wiggle of your toes, or feel free to stay in the Savasana for as long as continues to honor you today. If you would like to close up class together, move with intention, make your way into a seated position once again. As you find yourself in this final Sukhasana, just notice if your body is feeling any different than when you started class. Any more openings, relaxation, is your breath any easier? If you have any questions or concerns about anything that we said, or well, I said, and we did today, I hope you'll reach out. Till next time, continue to think good thoughts, speak good words, eat good foods, do good deeds, and all the things that nourish us from the inside out. Bring your thumb up to your third eye, your drishti, 
ground through your sit bones, lift your beautiful face, your elbows up to the ceiling and know that the light within me honors, sees, and is so thankful for the light within you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, y'all. Namaste.